Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, uh, this illustration that I have right here, which is unfinished, we are not going to be working on this one. I want to redo this piece because I generally don't think I like the direction that I was going with, and we'll get into that a little bit. So, we are drawing Layla from Genshin Impact, if you are not familiar with this character. Um, and I wanted to draw her for like quite a like quite some time ever since she's been released. Just like generally, her aesthetic is something that I personally really enjoy, as well as her color palette. I'm very attracted to like blues and teals. So because her majority of her outfits kind of like blue and gold, I kind of like I really like the color palette. And then for the aesthetic, she kind of looks. I think she does like star mapping stuff or something like that. So. Um, she has like a lot of more, I don't know if you want to say like celestial, she kind of has like star motif kind of stuff in her uh, aesthetic, which I really enjoy. But um, the reason why I wanted to restart the other piece, or restart this piece, I guess, I guess do a new version would might be a better way of saying it, is because I usually like doing these kinds of drawing sessions at night and because I've been getting a little bit less sleep lately, I've been getting sleepier before 3 a.m. I guess. I've been getting sleepier at like closer to 1. So I haven't been filming a lot of sessions like consecutively anymore, like all in one sitting. I'm going to try my best to do that for the uh, start to finish and I'll get into that a little bit as well. But um, because I filmed the other one up from sketch to partially like uh, the coloring stage and then I went to sleep and then I woke up the next morning and I noticed that I really didn't like the piece as much. I didn't really like her face. I didn't like the color scheme and the lighting. I don't know. I needed to really... Like I could spend some time to fix it and spruce it up to a point where maybe I think it's passable but for me I think it was easier for a whole new restart so this is what I decided to go with. I started to draw Layla in a pose where she's kind of like looks like she's sitting at kind of a table or a desk and I have one hand looking like she's writing on a surface and then the other one's kind of propping her face up and then because I got kind of like a general pose done I'm just going to add in the face we'll get into the hair and the rest of the details and then we'll get into coloring in the background. Uh, I'll have a to do a little bit of explaining for the background um, because I did make some choices which kind of regretted a little bit but yeah for the most part I am okay with this piece it's not my most favorite and I don't hate it either so uh, let's just say that's a win for me um, so before I get too off tangent so this session I was technically gonna make it a start to finish because it's been almost two months since I've done a start to finish so if you're not familiar with my start to finish videos usually I do a whole video where I do very minimal cuts I only usually do cuts if I need to um, get rid of any coughing sneezing bodily sounds me like shuffling my legs or anything like that or any just like bodily noises usually sniffling happens a lot for me because my sinuses and I get congested quite easily <laughs> but uh, for start to finish videos I like to show the whole entire process like you know from start to finish and I like to film those usually in one sitting and partially it's because usually when I do the drawing in one sitting I kind of maintain the energy a little bit and the general direction that I want to do these especially if they're ones that I did not plan prior I feel like the last few illustrations that I've done digitally, in my previous sketchbook, I did a lot of planning, at least in terms of thumbnailing, or sometimes I'll browse Pinterest and try to gather some kind of like aesthetic or um, color palette idea. And this time I did not, which probably is why I suffered a little bit in terms of back and forth of do I like this piece, do I not? What do I need to do to fix it? And this piece is gonna change a lot in terms of like a little bit of the size of things, um, the shape of things, this is gonna keep changing quite a bit. The mouth is not gonna stay the same. Um, she's gonna look a little less depressed, so hopefully that might fix things a little bit. And I believe her head is a little bit too large compared to her body at this point because when I added the little hood part, um, it kind of accentuated the, the largeness of the head compared to the body. 
But yeah, like I said, this one was supposed to be a start to finish, but because I split it up into two sessions and I had a very inconsistent day for drawing, um, that I had, I had like two days blocked out just in case, um, in my brain, and as well as like, I don't have to attend any appointments with anybody or anything like that, or help out just with family stuff in general. So yeah, I took my time working on this piece, so I kind of went back and forth on I would draw some parts, take a break, draw some parts, take a break, draw some parts, do something else, and then draw some parts I had to go somewhere, and kind of this back and forth, that like start, stop, start, stop, and I feel like it kind of killed my momentum a little bit, and the amount of time it took me to finish this drawing was much longer than some of my other ones, and I think it's because every time I took a break, um, it took me a little bit of time to get mentally back into the same thought process as well as every time I take a break and stop I kind of like pick a new area to focus on and which leaves like another area incomplete so I'm just leaving like a bunch of areas incomplete and it just for me it's like I don't remember to go back to finish them sometimes so or like to check whether or not it looks correct so I feel like it's like a lot of time spent poorly so yeah and that's kind of the reason i didn't want to do a start to finish for this one because it's a lot of repetitive erasing of the same thing because i thought it looked correct the first time then i took a break and was like maybe i didn't draw it correctly this time so let's redo it so if there's any kind of i'm gonna stick maybe with genshin impact we'll see if i want to stay too too close to my comfort zone if i want to kind of tackle some other characters from genshin impact but let me know who you guys want me to draw maybe for a start to finish video so that you guys can see the full length process um, from sketching to rough colors to the background to effects and then rendering final touches and stuff to basically to the end um, and let me know i rather draw somebody probably i haven't drawn before unless um i've done a drawing and you just want to see a new drawing of them because there's a lot of characters i wish i redid the concept that i did for them or i feel like i didn't do them quite as much justice at the time probably because like a lot of the ones i did treat very much like portrait like a portrait bust of the character on a blank colored background i'm gonna say like chong yoon i think xing cho bennett those four no three who else is there xin yun could be a part of that one too um there's like a bunch of them goro toma all of those like very much just portrait and then flat color background so i could definitely do something a little bit more dynamic or we can throw in a background make it a little bit more atmospheric or immersive for the character rather than just you know it looks like school like first day back to school photo or whatever you call it like yearbook photo ish kind of thing well that might be a cute idea for a sticker set though i'll maybe keep that in the back of my brain um but another thing I wanted to talk about is that I... How is the sound? Um, I don't, I'm gonna probably lower the sound a little bit of the iPad. So I didn't really notice too, too much um, in the Masiki drawing video where I said that I switched iPads, which by the way, if you missed Saturday's video, I did switch iPads. I decided to upgrade the space and by doing so, I needed to get a new screen protector and everything else pretty much remains the same. Uh, iPad size is the same, program is the same, brushes are the same, settings are the same, um, case is the same, Apple Pencil is the same. Everything's pretty much the same except for the iPad itself in terms of space as well as the screen protector. So for the screen protector, I, I'm not using Paperlike anymore just because for timing, I didn't want to wait for a long shipping time. I was making sure that I wasn't going to draw on this iPad until I got a screen protector and yeah, I prefer having a matte screen protector. There's definitely less glare. You can even see a bit of my reflection-ish um, in the kind of like the darker areas of Procreate from time to time because I didn't realize the sun was peering through. So it's making it very much have a little bit more glare on the screen, which is kind of letting to have reflection as well. But uh, matte screen protector. So this one is much more rough compared to paper like in my opinion. Uh, maybe it just needs like needs a little bit of time for me to wear it down a little bit after some time just you know from overall usage but i noticed that the wear in my pencil has significantly gone up 
and I don't think it's entirely because the roughness of the iPad screen protector is more rough compared to Paperlike. I mean, it probably does affect it to some degree, but I don't think that's what's causing such a noticeable change. I do also think it's because the metal part of the Apple Pencil at this point, like the tip of it, has already been exposed. And because the white edges of like the casing is probably is what's getting kind of wore down the quickest. So I feel like my Apple Pencil kind of has like a nice little metal bald spot. I'm gonna do a little bit of research and check whether or not this is damaging or anything, but for the most part, as long as it doesn't scratch my actual iPad screen, I don't really think I'm gonna switch the tip too, too soon, but if the sound is a little bit too jarring, I might look into switching the sound, or not the sound, the tip, because when I do ASMR videos for you guys, I don't want the sound to be too jarring, and I feel like it sounds okay when I tilt the pencil, but once I use that bald spot on the pencil tip, it does get a little bit too scratchy in my opinion, so we'll see. Okay, back to the illustration. So for the background, I was debating between two backgrounds. I could do a giant window behind Layla and do like night lit scene with the moon as the lighting source and do it like that. Or we could do something like how I did the Ike piece where I did kind of like a bookshelf kind of thing. So Ike is a novelist. So I thought it was more appropriate to set him in a setting like a library or some kind of reading room or anything like that, right? For Layla, because she's like usually working on essays and papers for her- I don't know, is she a student? I do not remember her like actual role, I guess. I don't know if she's a student, she's a researcher or something of like that, but she does like papers and I think like star mapping or something. So I wanted to do something to do with her paper because I do have her set at a desk with all like study material or writing material and stuff. So I decided to place the book shelf in the back. Now, in my brain, I thought this was an okay idea because I was like, I've executed this before so I know how I would like to do this. But what I didn't realize, and you'll see it a little bit later, especially like when I actually start to uh, put in more detail into the background and then I start to blur it, the color palette is eerily similar to my Ike piece and I think it's because every time I do darker lighting on like the background and stuff, there's some colors I'm gonna gravitate towards and some colors that I won't. And it kind of lent a big portion of that into helping it make look, what am I saying? My brain feels like I'm having an aneurysm right now. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that the similar process basically created a similar background as the Ike Eblin piece that I did. So for, fixing kind of that a little bit because I did spend a little bit more time on the background than I probably would have liked. I don't want to scrap it entirely. I had a thought that I could just scrunch the books to the left and then drop the big window or that I could just squeeze the bookshelf to the left and then leave the space on the right kind of more blank as if it's she's at the end of the bookshelf row and there's some space in between and that is kind of what I go with but for now I am still blocking in a lot of the colors I decided to do a little bit of embellishing on the books just generally and then I went with a new layer with multiply and added some shadow so we can get the background a little bit of depth so it doesn't look as flat. Now, the reason why I kind of made the books very scribbly looking, and I did this with Ike too, but for his piece, I think I put in a little bit more detail, even though I ended up blurring it, just to make it a little bit more believable. This one looks a little bit more ratchet in terms of quality. But I think it's okay. I feel like I was getting already fed up from drawing Layla twice. I don't think I did her justice in terms of um, how I wanted to draw her. I would have liked to included her hair because she is beautiful kind of, I guess it's like two pigtails, but they kind of form almost like twin drills at the very end. And they go from a gradient of a muted dark blue all the way into a nice kind of more vibrant baby, not even a baby blue, just a very light blue. And it looks really pretty. Um, so for the background, like I said, I'm gonna be blurring it. I added some addition of light 
to the background as well as I added an overlay to change the color temperature because I noticed it looked too similar to the one I did of Ike because I pretty much used similar colors of muted blues, purples, greens, and then I did gold basically to do borders and text um, in quotations for the book or the books on the shelf and I didn't realize I did it the, pretty much the same angle too um, kind of going from the left to the right kind of receding to the right side So I didn't want it to look too similar. So I am going to fix that probably later But for now, we're just gonna color in the desk and then it will color in Layla next so that I can figure out how I wanted to do the colors So one thing I kind of worried about I was trying my best to pick a light source So I put the light source just somewhere on the kind of almost bottom right, but it's kind of not directly on the very bottom because there is a desk and I didn't know if I wanted the light to be coming from behind her or next to her or from the desk in front of her so I decided to put it kind of next to her so that we could get a little bit of rim lighting on the right side and then we can have a little bit of harsher shadows on the left side especially like on the desk I wanted to make sure that her arm and hand looks like it's casting a shadow on the papers and stuff and then we're on to coloring Layla so as usual, um, I think because the footage was super long for this session, if you would like to see how I color, I highly recommend the start to finish videos if you like to see it in real time or any of my other draw with me videos or even my um, ASMR videos. You can probably see a little bit better of a sequence of how I color the skin, the eyes, then the hair usually, and then the rest of like the clothing of the character usually because I think I skipped quite a bit of the skin. So usually I do a base tone and then I will lock that so that we can stay within the shape that I've placed down with the skin tone. And then I will add kind of like warmer tones, usually adding blush, kind of establishing basic shadows. And then we'll go into a little bit more of a purpley or cooler tone, um, depending on what I have present. But um, yeah, I think because I made, no. Let me see. Let me how let me see how I can phrase this. I decided to change a bit of the colors a little bit later with overlays, I think, just because I believe I made it, the colors a little bit too muted to my taste. Um, granted that I usually like making things quite vibrant. I know like in a setting where it's darker, you know, majority of things are going to get a little bit less saturated, but I, I don't know if I really like the like the look of it unless it's like super necessary or I need it to um, portray like a certain atmosphere. But I feel like her skin just looked a little bit too flat. Um, her hair looked a little bit too muted as well. So a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of a lighter overlay over the right side of her so we can kind of bring up that a little bit of the saturation as well as brighten it up, brighten it up a little bit. Um, kind of painting the paper. I don't know if you call this like parchment paper. I'm not too sure. It's like kind of just rolled up scroll looking paper, kind of this muted tone, added some shadows, added some highlights. And then for her drawing utensil, I, I didn't draw it like a pen or a pencil. It kind of looks like a metal quill in a sense. I kind of mimicked the way it looked similar to how she has like these metal plating for her nails on her two first fingers. So her pointer finger and her middle finger as well as her thumb on both hands so yeah I'm I feel like I'm just rambling about my choices and I don't even know if it makes sense but I think I took quite a long time just coloring in general I think I took the most breaks too between sketching and this kind of rough coloring but once I actually get into rendering and cleaning up everything I kind of take my time as well as I kind of did it more or less in one sitting which kind of makes me do a lot of different changes. Now, I don't remember if I said this early, but, or earlier, that I decided to make some changes to this one a little bit as we get into the rendering phase. So I believe I used the liquid, like, uh, liquify tool to kind of expand her shoulders a little bit and her arms to be a little bit wider and then to push in a little bit of her hood as well as her hair because her head turned out a lot larger probably because of the hood so let me think before I get too too off tangent I guess I forgot to mention that for the start to finish video I would like to make one for next week so like I said if you have any character from 
Mm, I think, yeah, anyone from Genshin Impact or any just like general fan art. There's another one that I would like to do. I would like to talk about like animes that I currently am watching, especially like this season or just like my favorite anime from just like in general. I would like to do like a string of fan art for them eventually. We'll see. There's like a few things I would like to draw fan art like that isn't like super Genshin related. I know I've like sprinkled a few things of like ensemble stars. I want to do some stuff for Tears of Famous too, especially because um, my luck in Tears of Famous has been okay this time. Uh, so I think first, no, second 10 poll on Luke's ban like birthday banner, I got um, not exact, is it pity broken? I don't remember if um, Tears of Famous has a pity system, but I, or it kind of does. It has a guarantee, I guess, if that makes sense. But I got the, uh, like, a different card on Raid Up, which I don't think I had, so that's kind of lucky. And then, um, the next 10 pull, I actually got another SSR, which happens to be the birthday one of, um, Luke. And I really like that one, because I feel like Rosa looks so... She kind of looks, like, badass and very, I don't know, very... She's very pretty. I like that card a lot, so, yeah. And then Luke looks very dapper in a suit and they kind of both look like kind of like super like not super secret agents ish kind of like undercover at a fancy dinner party kind of setting i don't know it looks super cool and i i just like the aesthetic of it i'm excited to see what artems is for next year because i i forget because i know china's server is ahead of ours by like a year so mm. what else what else what else um Genshin, I'm always excited for. I'm always excited to see also new characters. I think what's one thing that's always going to draw me in, no matter what direction Genshin goes, or no matter how long I play Genshin for, it will always be the character designs. I absolutely love it. And I know a lot of people have been asking, like I've gotten several comments of people saying like, oh, if you play Ensemble Stars, like you should check out, um, what is it called? Project Sekai. Um, and like, what is it called? Project Sekai Colorful Stage. And I do have the game, and I occasionally play it. I don't play it enough to know the characters' stories and stuff. I initially downloaded it before Ensemble Stars because of, like, Vocaloid songs and stuff. I just wanted to play it for the music aspect because I used to play, like, rhythm games every so often. I'm not, like, super good at it. I don't think I have a good sense of rhythm, but it's still fun. Um, yeah, so I do play it a little bit. I don't have any attachments of, like to the characters and stuff because I don't read the story too too much or like actually play the story. So maybe if I get into it, I'll do some Project Sekai fan art. But for now, uh, we'll, we'll save those suggestions for like a different day. How about that? <laughs> mm, I'm trying to think. So I didn't hit record for one of my voice overs earlier today for this video so i do not remember if i talked about it but there's several genshin drawings that i would still like to do some redos of so we'll see if that will be saturday's video or next week's video but like i said i will want to get a start to finish video for next week for sure because it's almost been two months i think which is i i think i said earlier because i kind of kept it as a once a month type of thing and i think it's nice to have a video showing the full process every so often so once a month was gonna be an okay direction but i feel like i got too busy to or not even too busy just too sleepy because of my sleep schedule has been really screwed up <laughs> lately so we'll see we'll see how this goes but like i said if you guys have any genshin characters or just like stuff in general you like me to draw for a start to finish let me know <clears throat> or even just like uh concepts or like color palettes or anything like that you would like me to use like more of a cooler one more of a warmer one um, maybe something with foliage or more of like interior anything like that and i'll try to give my uh best shot at it for you guys to see if i can do a start to finish so you guys can see the full process on how i would tackle said subject um but yeah but for the most part i feel like i'm a little bit more not critical but i i want to like the start to finish videos to be an illustration that like i enjoy i think the ones that i remember off the top of my head is uh selene's one i do like that one because it was kind of fun even though i did rush it quite a bit 
Noelle. I think Noelle's came out really pretty. And then the other one was Mingyu. Mingyu's was a lot easier for me because it is based off of a screenshot during the music video and it's just like translating it into my style. So if that's something you also want, like, also want to see, just let me know because I could definitely just pick a bajillion 17 um, screenshots because I haven't done a, uh, what is it called? music video redraw in a long time um, because I feel like I just haven't been watching a lot of music videos like the only ones I really watch is literally 17 now this is less time dedicated to just like general uh, k-pop fangirling and just keeping up k-pop stuff in general but 17 will still forever have my heart and my soul so yeah <laughs> uh, what else what else what else what else Hmm. Actually, yeah, we skipped over that entire part because I went on a tangent again, but we're in the rendering and cleaning up phase. So for me, this is basically making things look a little bit cleaner, a little bit sharper, and kind of like fixing any mistakes at this point or just getting rid of miscellaneous lines, adding some extra highlights or shadows in some areas, just making everything look a little bit more crisp. So uh, for her mouth, I decided to change it. I didn't really like her expression too, too much. So I decided to change it to more of a closed mouth, a little bit more, I don't know if it's he not hesitant. I don't know how to describe her expression like exactly, but she kind of looks more like bummed out because I feel like she, I feel like it's obvious that she doesn't enjoy tr like doing the essay writing and stuff because she's very tired. I'm assuming it's because if she's doing star mapping, she's up all night and then probably has to write the paper at, like maybe throughout the day so she gets very little sleep. I, yeah, I don't know. I was just glad to see her during that um, fungi tournament event. It was very fun. Very Pokemon-esque, I think. Hmm, that's another thing I didn't really talk about either. I played Pokemon, I think, last week or so. And I really enjoyed it. I know some people are like a little bit hesitant, but I feel like if you truly just enjoy Pokemon as is, it's still an enjoyable game for the most part. I think I've only experienced like once or twice. There's some kind of like... Maybe I think it was only once, kind of like a glitchy type thing. I think I was like, I clipped through a wall because of a Pokemon encounter. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. For the most part, like I didn't think it was too, too buggy. I definitely think the graphics are a little bit low and yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's like, I'm not too picky with games. Maybe that's it. Or I just, it's been a while since I played games. So like I needed anything and like to kind of you guys tell I'm tired. <laughs> uh, I just needed something to take a break and take my mind off of just staring at the computer for endless amount of hours. But yeah. Uh, touched grass a lot this week and last week. So that's probably why my sleep schedule is kind of screwed up. Because like no matter what, I stay up to the same time every night. No matter what. For the most part. Even if I have to go out early the next day. And I'm seeing early as if it's like super early. I'm talking about like, eight, I have to be out the house like at 8 a.m. It's not too early. But like granted, I usually wake up at nine. So it's it's a little bit more earlier than what I'm used to because if I sleep at three and I wake up at nine, I get six hours. But if I have to be out by eight, I guess I don't take too long to get ready in the morning. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm just in a very rambly state. I'm, I do apologize. Later on, hopefully, once I get back into the swing of things again, I'll make sure to get a good amount of stuff done before the winter holidays, and then that might give myself a break as well, maybe be in a more... Not a stupid headspace for my brain in terms of just not being able to process words at the moment. But yeah, uh... Not too sure. Also, this video is just a lot longer than the other one because of the amount I had to cut out, but I still wanted to leave a good amount of me doing the cleaning up and rendering phase for you guys because I feel like if I don't show a lot, it looks drastically different, which I don't know, it just seems a little bit weird not to see just like little bits and bobs of me kind of picking areas, kind of fixing, cleaning, getting rid of certain lines, changing the colors and stuff. Maybe this is my opinion. 
Actually, that's another thing I forgot to probably mention when I said that you guys should leave suggestions on who you would like me to do like an illustration of for a start to finish video is that VTubers can be also included because you guys know how much I love drawing Niji Sanji characters or livers, I guess might be a better way to say not characters. Uh, the Niji Sanji livers because I enjoy a lot of their content and their designs are very much fun and I feel like a lot of them have very cool lore or aesthetics that we could play around with in terms of like theme or concept um yeah i think that could be fun i might do another asmr on one of them too in terms of drawing process because i think i only have like mill no not millie's millie was a painting session so i had ukis as a asmr i believe so yeah i'll leave like a pinned comment at the very top so you guys have uh a better semblance of like not what I'm looking for, but like suggestions that I'm looking for. Cause I know a lot of like, every time I ask for suggestions, people just meant like think I mean just general fan art. So they suggest like a bunch of anime fan art rather than anything or like draw my profile picture kind of thing, which is not what I'm looking for. I might do something for December for you guys. Cause it's been a while since I've done um, draw your OCs. But what I'm thinking is I don't know if I want to say it because will I commit or will I not because I feel like I have a very bad track record this year of saying I'll do something and either postponing it or not being able to do it so I'll just say it now because then I'll, I'll plan for it for the next few days and get that ready for maybe December so yeah I'll make a proper announcement for it in a video so that you guys can just, like leave your OCs into the Instagram tags so that I can kind of sort around and fix it up and figure out what I want to do for the thing because I feel like if I do it on Clip Studio Paint it might be quicker <laughs> we'll see we'll see because I feel like if I do line work it's actually a lot faster for me to knock out a lot of characters other than just like me rendering in more of a painterly way how I'm doing it here on one layer because I I feel like I go back and forth so often of me just like picking an area thinking I rendered it or like fixed it up to a certain point and then leaving it alone and coming back and feeling like you know it kind of looks a little off so you keep fussing with it and you get to a point where you should have stopped like I don't know 10 minutes ago on that one little piece <sighs> So I don't know how many times I had more of an like a overview shot of the entire piece. So I don't remember when there was like the shift of the bookshelf. So I did get rid of like the one right side of the bookshelf and left it as an open space. So we could have light peering through and kind of breaking up the background a little bit. So it's not just a flat um, shelf behind her as well as the books in front of her. So I had books in front of her, I had a bunch of scattered paper. I made sure to make it look like the hand is kind of like resting on the paper. So there's a nice casting of shadow and where the pen kind of like touches the paper as well. For her hair, she also has these little, I don't know if you consider these stars, maybe like sparkle shapes in her hair as kind of like a band going across um, where I guess like highlights would be for her hair if it's like around her crown of her head. So I did that with an overlay because I thought it'd be a little bit easier. And then here I'm just kind of fixing up some objects because I forgot to lower down the opacity for the, what is it called? The addition layer. So everything became super washed out and super bright. So I couldn't tell what was her arm, what was supposed to be accessories for her hair or her hair in general, or where it was supposed to be her sleeve or anything like that. So yeah, a lot of things in this I kind of because I went back and forth, I don't remember what I did for certain things. Like you can see here, I think I got rid of the lines during the coloring of the skin. And I realized that she needs to have that so it's symmetrical on both sides. Hmm. One day, I think I'm going to do one that shows a little bit more of her body so that we can get her hair length in there. Because you can't really see the twin tail. I don't know if it's, I don't even consider if it's like drill hair basically um, but i would like to include it because i think it's really pretty because i don't think many genshin characters have curly hair in that sense um probably because it's a little bit harder maybe i don't actually don't know like a lot of their hair is either like straight or it's like bunched up or you know a little bit wavy in a sense but hers is like literally kind of more of spirally so hmm. and i think that's pretty much it in terms of the illustration of Layla. I was trying to figure out 
excuse me, um, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do the lighting. So like I said, I'm going to use an overlay layer on top of everything, kind of change the temperature a little bit, kind of knock the background to be less looking similar to the Ike piece that I did. I'm going to select everything and duplicate it or after grouping it, I will duplicate it. And then I will make the new one and merge it so that it's all one flat image. And then I will take this one, use Gaussian blur to kind of blur out everything a little bit. And then I will take the eraser to kind of bring back the focus onto certain areas, which for me is gonna be the face, kind of the front part of Layla and maybe her hands, but it kind of pushes the bookcase a little bit back again, as well as the books in the front or like the paper scattered on the front. But yeah, one last Gaussian blur, and I think this one is done. I do apologize that this video is probably more disjointed than the last. I will get proper sleep soon um, and make sure that I am well rested for the next video, hopefully. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video though and watching me kind of s struggle to draw Layla and you can see the different decisions that I made during the rendering part where I kind of fixed the the hood, the desk, and kind of the body and the face a little bit. So yeah, here's Layla. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!